So again, very welcome uh, to this uh, third installment of Deep Cuts. Uh, I'm super happy that all of you have sort of decided to spend two hours here and to listen to three speakers that we have lined up today. Um, and I'm also super happy that we are back at this fantastic gallery, uh, the Obra Gallery, uh, situated in Valstaden, Malmö, and yeah, take a moment to sort of take in take in the room and feel the feel the, the, the amazing spirit and history and whatnot about this space. Uh, my name is Martin, and I'm the organizer and curator of these um, seminars, the Deep Cuts seminars. And I'm going to try to be your guide to the program today. Um, and I've been thinking a lot about the theme of today. And it's, the theme is deconstruct, construct. And it springs from this sort of interest in understanding why it's so important for humans, for all of us, to understand. Uh, and that we scrutinize, analyze, look for patterns, and sort of spend our lives figuring things out. Um, and I really believe art is a great vehicle for understanding life and all of these things that we want to understand. Uh, and that's the major reason why we're in a gallery and doing these presentations and seminars. Um, and it's also very interesting that we're here today. And it's not a coincidence that the topic is deconstruct, construct, because the topic co springs from a conversation with the artist who is showing her, her work currently in the exhibition. Her name is uh, Carla uh, Saganinin. She's an uh, Argentinian artist. Um, and the title of this show is you say you are one, I hear we are many. Uh, and to me, that points to some sort of dissonance in communication. Somebody is saying one thing, you hear something else, or you see something else. Um, and in these works of Kalas, her, her, that dissonance centers around um, nation states and their identifiers. Uh, and we know that it's important for nations like Sweden or Denmark or Argentina to define their uniqueness, um, to enable their citizens to feel a belonging, uh, and also maybe ad adopt a willingness to defend the uniqueness of that place, uh, and also to communicate to the rest of the world a sovereignty of a territory. Um, and the most Basic elements in these communications are things like flags and national hymns. Um, and so through these colors and symbols and words are used to carve out what's so unique about a piece of land, or at least it tries to do so. But I think it's interesting to, 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 to just note that the concept of sovereign states are not even 400 years old. 400 years is a lot, but it's also a very short period of time. And to acknowledge that, that this is a designed concept, uh, and it's, it's, it's a way of sort of organizing the world. Um, and sometimes it works quite well, right? Uh, and in some other times, their faultiness is, is very visual. Um, and in other cases, this way of organizing the world also reinforces the inequalities of the world. Uh, and, you know, the concept certainly feels failed in times when there's a need of migration because of war, natural disasters, whatnot, that we've been experiencing in the last couple of years, or in increasingly nationalistic times when sort of the us and them narrative are getting rooted. Um, so it's therefore important to, to, to be able to understand um, what we are and where we come from and what, what is so sort of unique. And in Carla's work, what she does is that she analyzes the colors and the symbols in and words in those national symbols, only to show us that they're actually a lot the same. Uh, so in previous works, you've shown how colors are repeated in a lot of flags. Uh, and in this particular work, she shows how the same words appear in the same places in national hymns. Um, uh, 
And this is true for this sort of sameness in the uniqueness of nations. Also, we can see that also in, in things like brands or companies. Um, brands and companies go to a great length to sort of differentiate themselves from others and try to describe what we should uh, buy one brand and not another. Uh, again, the use of design and words um, are used to, to, to make that differentiation. Uh, but only to end up very much the same. I mean, look at sneakers or smartphones or even things like mobile subscription services. I mean, the variation isn't huge uh, in all of these things, although companies try to try their best to point out the differences. Um, and the same thing goes with food. Uh, at least at some level. And there was just a publication out um, by a Danish food organization called MAD uh, that is called You and I Eat the Same that points to the similarities in food around the world. So there is one article, for example, that all cultures wrap, wrap things in bread in one way or another. Um, uh, and I just find it very interesting to sort of look for the sameness when we talk about unique. And, and I gave everybody here today a, a dumle kola, and I don't know if you noticed it, but I presented it as a very Swedish thing. And at some level, I mean, dumle is, I don't know if you can buy it in Argentina, but the concept of the thing that is inside is you can find in all cultures. Like coffee, uh, chocolate with some sort of toffee thing in the middle. Um, but somebody that knows a lot about food and how to sort of approach the produce that she gathers uh, in the kitchen and actually also to use the uniqueness of a place uh, in making food that is unique for that place is our first speaker. And so Titi Kvonstam is a Malmö-based chef and restaurateur that in 2015 was the first female head chef of a Scandinavian restaurant to be awarded a Michelin star. She now runs uh, Folk Matomatan and is also involved in a lot of uh, interesting food initiatives uh, in our region. And so please give a warm welcome to Titti Kvarnstam. <laughs> 